There we go. Oh, yeah. Hello, everybody. Let me just uh, clear up a few things here. Um, yeah. Uh, and uh, Hold on a second. You'll move in in a second. Hold on. Tom. Let me move this over here. Uh, let me see here. Hello, Tom Yamaguchi. Hey, Tom. hey. Hey, how are you? Wait a minute. Hold on a second. There we go. We we get Tom. Hold on. We're just we're just getting going here, dear. There's Tom. Hi, and, Tom. And hey. uh, uh, he's uh, he's our old friend from Berkeley, California. How's how's everything in Berkeley? Will you move that? Well, uh, I'll tell you why. I sent you a Facebook message. I don't know. Uh, I guess you didn't see it, but uh, the reports are coming in that uh, Kevin Meany is dead. What? Wow. Kevin, yes, I'm reading reports on Twitter. Paul Provenza, Bobby Slayton, they're all reporting that Kevin Meany is dead. Oh. From what? How? I don't know. I'm trying to get more information. Wow. Kevin Meany is, was one of the people that, in my life, who I had to always tell to stop because it made me laugh so hard that I started hurting. Mm -hmm. You know? And it's terrible. That's wow. horrible. I'm I sorry. I, 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 as I said, I'm looking for the, the, the details. I hope, you know, I don't know. It might be even a hoax, but I, I don't know. Coming from, you know, sources like Prevenz and, and Bobby Slayton, I, I, doubt I would a, think I that it wouldn't be a hoax. I doubt if it's a hoax. Wait, so where are you seeing it online? On With, Twitter. On Twitter. Oh, man. That's sad if true. You know, I, I, I love the guy. Uh, let me see here. Hold on. Let me see if there's anything that I see on Twitter. Is well, I've got Tom Yamaguchi here about uh, surviving the British veteran of the Civil War is dead at 98. <laughs> you, 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 wait, why are you over there? I'm gonna go are you gonna go look? Sure, oh, yeah. see if you can find it. Yeah. yeah. Boy, that's terrible. Wow. That's horrible. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel so uh, so bad. You know. But yeah. what are you gonna do? That's life. Yeah. It, yeah. It, yeah. Yeah, it's awful. He's it was he wasn't that old. I mean, no, uh, um, uh, I'm trying to think how old he would be. You know, most of the guys who did my show he were was born in '56. '56. Yeah, we're usually about 15 uh, years younger than me. You know, yeah. Um, 56. So he was 56 years old. Did you find his a bit? Oh, bit. I just see on, on Twitter. Twitter. That's all she sees it on. So it's just hitting the Twitter verse, and that seems to be it. Yeah. <laughs> You know, so how are you doing, Tom? Oh, busy, yeah. very busy. R r busy doing what? By the way, nobody's calling right now, so it's just you and me. <laughs> laugh spin, laugh spin, laugh spin. What is laugh spin? Kevin Meany died at fifty-nine. Does it say what he died from? Um, huh. what? It but he, he doesn't say. Oh, okay. All right. Well. So he's he's wow, 59. yeah fifty nine yeah yeah uh, I I love Kevin Kevin was a sweet dear person who by the way was a gay really and we did he never came out of the closet until oh. what into his forties I think if I remember okay, correctly yeah yeah uh, and I was we were all kind of surprised we never ever thought of Kevin as gay. You know, but the question is, what is gay, right? So, anyway. Well, anyway, one of the funniest moments on, yeah. on your San Francisco program yes. was when uh, Michael Snyder was giving his movie reviews. <laughs> yes. And he did this, uh, he did this uh, you know, impression of Sean Connery. And the movie was, he was ready to his first night. And so he was playing Sean Connery from The Untouchables. And then when he does that, did after he did that, that that's when Kevin Meany said, Oh, that was great. That was a great Sean Connery. Do it again. <laughs> and then, and then, by and, the way, turn your camera on, Tom. It yeah. went off for some reason. He would, he would go, um, he started going, uh, Do it again. No, do it again. Do it again. Do it again, do it again, do it again, do it again. He must have gone on for five minutes saying over and over again, do it again, do it again, do it again, and different little voices, do it again, do it again, do it again. And I, I was pissing my pants. Yeah. It, it was just ridiculous how funny that man could be because his comedy was unrelenting comedy. And it, it, it's, 
It's a very brave kind of comedy. Monty Python does it too, where you do mm -hmm. something and then you keep doing it and you keep doing it. You do it to a point where it's not funny anymore. And then you keep doing it and keep doing it until it is funny again. Anyway. Uh, we, we still don't see you for some reason, I, Tom. I try to t turn my camera back on. It's not going back why on. Don't, why don't you hang up and call right back? Okay. Okay, do, do that, because that happens sometimes with the second caller. We don't know why. But our first call, our second caller was Rob. Hello, Rob. Hello. Hi, Marjorie. How Hi, are you? Rob. How are you this evening? Happy Friday. Oh, happy Friday. Doing okay? Yeah. Wait a minute. Here comes Tom. We'll add him. And what comedian see. were you talking about just now? Uh, Kevin Meany. Oh, okay. He passed away. He passed, yeah. Wow, really? Yeah. yeah. 59. We Well, so far we think he's dead. It says know. 59, but it doesn't say how he died. 59, wow. It's yeah. yeah. my age. Yeah. Yeah, well, I've seen, you know, I've, I've seen him come and go over the years. You know, I'm starting to realize that a lot of the comedians I've known are dead. Are gone. You know, people like Robert Schimmel, who I love dearly, who died in the most of the most in and, the most extreme circumstances, I might add. You know, and actually, uh, that's actually how I found out that Robert Schimmel was uh, had died was through um, through uh, through Twitter. Yeah, uh, um, Rob. Uh, hi, yeah. David Hajek is joining us. Hello, David. Hello, everybody. Hey. Hi. Anyway, I'm, we're just talking about somebody we know who died. Uh, uh, when Do Schimmel died, that that was the amazing one because there there wasn't a year that didn't go by that I didn't believe I was going to get a call that Robert Schimmel was dead because he had had cancer, mm -hmm. he had had all kinds of brain manner of things, uh, brain cancer. Huh? I loved his comedy. Oh, he was wonderful. But Excellent. the thing was, there were so many of these different things that were wrong with him. And then he had kidney, he had to get a kidney replacement and so on. And while he was waiting for that, he's driving down the road with his daughter driving. They have a car accident and he gets killed. You know, know. it's like, and then, so somebody calls me up and says, have you heard Schimmel's dead? And I go, what did he die of? And he said, car crash. And I went, what? <laughs> you know, I mean, it was just so amazing. Um, so uh, when, it, and you know, I mean, I remember Sam dying, Sam Kinison dying. And feeling just horrible about that, uh, and um, all these people who died unexpectedly young. Now, of course, Meany isn't young, but he isn't old either. You know, so fifty-nine. That's yeah, younger yeah, than I am. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's my age, and I feel young. <laughs> By the way, we've been joined tonight uh, from Czechoslovakia, uh, the Czech Republic. Actually, that's what it is now, right, David? Yes. Uh, with David Hajek. Do I, am I, have can't I, see him. Have I been pronouncing your name right? By the way, move over. Oh, we, it's, it should be Hayek, but it doesn't matter. Hayek? Oh, okay. Yes. It's like, as in Selma Hayek. Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. No relation, however. No, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> and your, your favorite person in the whole world is here, David. He just joined oh. us. Say he hello. just joined us, so I'm gonna hang up. No, no. don't do that, David. Uh, David, I, David I, are, you, um, are you coming? He, he makes me nauseous. You know? Yeah, are you <laughs> coming to San Francisco so I can make you nauseous over lunch? No, no, no. I'm not. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna make it to the West uh -huh. Coast. I will stay on the East Coast only. Oh, okay, uh, then, you have, well, then wait a minute. Hold on a second. Then when you have lunch with me, David. Oh, I can have lunch with you. Yeah, that's. See? That would be nice. Yeah, yeah, that would be very nice. Okay, and then what we can do is I can I can FaceTime Phil and we can just give him the finger and hang up. Yeah. <laughs> what else is new? Well, David is is not a big fan of yours, Phil. Uh, you, I don't you know. know True. What, what were you saying, uh, David, to me? You write, wrote me about your wife and the hospital and she was listening yeah, to the show. Like last two weeks ago when you were talking about competition in healthcare business. Mm -hmm. My wife just turned it down in London, really. Well, she she works in a hospital. She's yes. A nurse. Yeah. yeah. And she had to turn it down. Yeah, because pa patients in St. Mary Hospital in London, they be like, who's that idiot on the on that gabnet who's talking about <laughs> competition in healthcare business? Well, yeah, yeah. They love yeah. their uh, universal healthcare. And as Jason said a week ago, I hope that it's going to happen in the United States. No, but no, you don't believe it, Alex. By the way, people saw me chastising girlfriend here because she was playing with the mouse that makes the whole thing go here. 
Don't touch that. <laughs> no, bad girl. Don't anyway, touch me uh, there. no. Well, the thing is that it must be you know really strange for people in London to hear some asshole in the United States talking about competition in healthcare when there's no such thing in most civilized countries in this world. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, we right? said we were civilized. And it's not going to change in our lifetime. I mean, it's not. I, I don't think so. Yeah. No, I don't believe it will either. You know, I, mean, I think we are uh, two, two, uh, oh, my watch just said what? Breathe. Stand up. My watch yes. just said breathe. <laughs> That's you know, the breathe one. I, yeah. I was in the emergency room on Wednesday. I got great service. They took care of everything. Mm -hmm. You know, I gave yeah, but you, you pay $900 a month for the, your health care, Phil. And I paid 250 for the visit. Plus, I'm I'm looking forward to a bill uh, for uh, other services. Yeah. So, so how is that wonderful, Phil? Wouldn't it be nice if you just walked out and didn't have to pay anything? No. Uh, hey, uh, oh, it would be nice if the tooth fairy left me money under my pillow. Well, no, but, all you, you know, in every other country. Don't make, I, don't make fun of it. I, I want you know people need to make a living and. You know that's uh, that's the way it is. Yes, and they, and, and they make a good living. Yeah. But, but you don't make a profit no, on people's lives. Yeah, very good. Thank you, dear. Mm -hmm. uh, See, so yeah, I'll give her a kiss for that. Well, you know, I mean, the the fact of the matter is that you know you're talking about people's lives here. Yes. You're not talking about people making money. And the fact I, is, uh, let me ask David. Your wife is is a nurse in London, right? Yes. What kind of money does a doctor in London make? Like average would be like two hundred fifty thousand English pounds, which we, is around three hundred seventy thousand dollars a year. That's not bad. So not is that bad. okay, Phil? Care? No, because uh, you know they should. How is not okay? Gee, how is not okay, Phil? Uh, it's not okay because you know I I think that doctors should be paid what they're worth. If well, they're, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, wait a minute. They're getting paid more than they're worth. Well, that's the problem too. But uh, you know, three hundred women. Uh, in what world? It, and by the way, David, I should add to that that it may be three hundred fifty thousand, which is more than I thought it was. But it may be three hundred fifty thousand. But they also get bonuses for proof uh, for decent service to their patients. Am I correct about well, that? Yes, you're correct. Helping healthy, he yeah. healthy patients. Yeah. The uh, price will go down when there's competition. No, the price never no, goes no, down. Never give me, give, down. give me an example. Uh, hi, hi, Jeff. By the way, turn on your camera. Okay. Um, it's uh, called free market. Uh, no, 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 it's, no. It doesn't work. Well, you know, how do you? How if, do you, if, it, 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 you see, we don't have a free market health system in this country. If we did, the prices yeah, yeah. would go down. And and tell me, tell me what free market system in the United States the prices have gone down. Well, just just give me an uh, example. Electronics. Or, oh, oh, no, no, no. The reason they've gone down on electronics is because they're being made in larger uh, amounts. You very know. simple. Uh, uh, no, if, uh, no, no. For, to begin with, here's where you're wrong, Phil. We're talking about life and death. We're not talking about turning on a TV set. Now, does anybody get turned down for uh, for health care if they go into a hospital and they need it, regardless of whether they have uh, insurance or not? Uh, uh, yeah, they have been known to. That yes. Have, have you ever heard about patient dropping? And that was only put in place because they don't have universal health care. So they made that available. Yes, but have you heard of patient dumping? Well, you know, the difference have between... Have you heard of you patient dumping? Yes. And what is uh, that? What is that, Phil? That's where they don't take the patient; they send them over to another hospital in a poorer part of town. Yeah, well, they right. drop them off in a corner. Yeah, and sometimes they're dead when they hit the pavement. Well, uh, that's good; it doesn't hurt. Uh, oh, jeez, Phil! <laughs> <laughs> you set that up. Yeah. One, of, one of the one of the guys at the at the dinner last night that uh, Burns. What's the name of that dinner that we watched uh, with Al? Al Smith. Yeah, Al one Smith of them said, uh, "Wow, look at this crowd. This is a." Uh, this is a, a gathering of the haves and the have mores. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, and, oh, Jeff, have you got trouble with your camera tonight? I didn't think so. What's going on? It, it, have you clicked it. it on? No. Yeah, there you go. Now you're whirling around because it's TV night and I want people to see your point. Okay. okay. Uh, there well, and here comes. Uh, uh, but, uh, hey, Charlie. Uh, you know, I mean. Hi. I, I just, I, David, I understand exactly how you feel about Phil, especially when it comes to this issue. Yeah. I mean, really. Uh, 
let's say let's say they increase my tax burden mm -hmm. to pay for health care. Uh, I would rather pay for the health care that I choose mm -hmm. at, for the amount of money I'm paying. Right now, it's a nine ninety, and uh, that uh, that gets me my health care uh, along with some deductibles. So you know. Uh, but it's my choice. I, 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 hey, I pay $100 a month to Medicare, and I go to any doctor I want to. Well, that's because you've also paid into the no, system. No, 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 no. I Everybody who buys Medicare gets Medicare. Get, do you have Medicare yet, Rob? No. Yes, no, no. no anybody I, else? I, I you have I, it, right, Jeff? Yes. Do you have Medicare? Tom, no, no, no. do you have Medicare? I do. 65. Okay. How, uh, tell me. Tell me, guys, how much uh, uh, um, uh, do you have you ever not been able to choose your doctor? No. Yeah. So I mean, it's bullshit, uh, Phil. It's all rhetoric, Phil. It's what they tell you. I've never had not been able to choose my doctor. The only time I haven't been able to choose my doctor is when there's a doctor who won't take. Medicare. But then again, I have doctors who are not part of a network, and I can't go to them either. I have to go to somebody who's in network, so I don't have to pay extraordinary amounts of money and not get much money back from my insurance company. So there's no difference. And with that, I'm saying good night, folks. Good night. Good night. The difference is you have a choice. And you're not. And I've got uh, my pants on. Who's you, have, you have fucking choice for $12,000 a year. Yeah, I can choose yeah, and, and let me well, let me just, ask you, David, uh, uh, about uh, about uh, well, you, we're talking London, but you're in the Czech Republic, so that's where yes, you get. I go to London very often. Yeah, but you, you get your medicine from from there. Uh, yes. Uh, can you choose your doctor? Of course. Okay, Phil, shut up. David's costing me a lot of money. How? Uh, how come? How? Well, you turn me on to this proton therapy, and the only place I can find it uh, locally is Stanford Hospital. So I don't want to give up my uh, my Kaiser, so I'm looking into getting an insurance that Stanford will take. I'll pay their policy for six months. I'll get the proton therapy you recommended, which I think is very good, and then I'll drop the, yeah, the isn't uh, that, Stanford. Isn't that interesting? You're paying $900 a month for insurance. Let me get this straight. And you can't get the therapy you need? Oh, I want. Shit. No, they, I can get what uh, they'll give me. Which ah, is, uh, it's not which what you is, want. Well, they'll, not, car they'll carve up your prostate. Well, okay. worse than and, that. And, I, you know, with well, the and wouldn't it be nice not to pay this anything and right. go anywhere right. and not to pay anything? And get the treatment you want. Much. Walk over to Stanford and say, hey, I'm here. Give me the treatment, and they go fine. You know. By the way, you don't pay anything because the government does that. In, in three years, I can do that if I got Medicare, because Medicare will pay for proton therapy, but Kaiser will not. Oh well, now hey, hey, let's talk about. Uh, I mean, it isn't as though Medicare is socialized medicine, but it's the next best thing. Phil, you're fortunate that you can say I'll spend that extra money, but how many people can't? Exactly. I mean, well, comic books probably. <laughs> You know, yeah. instead of the so fuck them, right? Fuck them. No, if they can, they, they, they're money. usually on some sort of assistance that pays for it. It's not true. Yeah, but it's crazy. Yeah. That's a nice way. That's a nice compartmental way to, to just kind of, you know, tidy all that up. That's a good tidy answer, but it's not good. true. Well, of course like, it's for, true. Do Do you think that Tonic Tonic can can pay thousand dollars a month? Tony pays more than that for his yeah, braces. Yeah. <laughs> right? Oh my God. You know, Tony, yeah. Tony's got Invisalign. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I get the price of 3800 Bill, isn't Kaiser one of the least expensive things <laughs> yeah, to buy? Yeah, I think so. Uh, and uh, with it, you And get... also, it's very limited to what yeah. you're going to do. Right. Uh, what they said was is that uh, the people that get proton therapy have as many side effects as the people that get radiation. Uh, I don't believe that because what uh, David was able to uh, send to me and the, and the research I was able to do off of it said that 97% of the people didn't have the side effects that you get with the radiation. And it doesn't last anywhere near as long. Uh, you know, uh, it's, it's such a superior uh, uh, type of... And I, I, I had it for free 
and they fed me to... Yeah? Yeah. Did you like the food? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> what did they give you? You know, Phil, you know, this idea that by, by making it competitive, you make it better is not true. I you mean, make it cheaper, wait, and you make it better because well, look you at, have wait, to wait, have, wait a minute. Look what happened to health insurance so when they when they passed uh, when Reagan deregulated health insurance and they could they didn't weren't required to be nonprofit organizations any longer. That has nothing to do look, with competition. No, but that was they're all they're all come on. Look at look look at the amount of money they make these insurance companies. If they are if, making money like crazy, I'm you. sure they are. But you know what? If you could buy insurance uh, from a carrier in Ohio, maybe, but I'm in California, and those and you were and they were competing against one another, the price goes down. They are but, competing that, against one another anyway. Locally, there are several insurance uh, companies. There's too few companies in the local and, markets. And, and oh, so what you what you want are a bunch of companies that are shysters and no, are going to take advantage of people. Wait a minute, Rob wants to say something. There aren't that many. They've all, it's the same as everything else. Everything has been bought up and they're, they're huge conglomerates now. You don't have the choice. So that's, free market is a bunch of bullshit anyway. That's what was created. So there's no true free market in the insurance uh, uh, programs because uh, there's been consolidation and that consolidation has been uh, brought on by government regulation. No, what happened was is that we suddenly said it was okay for you to be a profit-making organization and now they're squeezing every buck out of every American they it's possibly nothing, can. It's nothing to do with making a profit. No, if, that has if, everything to do no, with making a profit. It also no has profit. to do with the fact that these insurance companies are price fixing. That's true. And, and greedy. And, and, and the price fixing is brought on but by you, government you realize, regulation. But, uh, Phil, uh, Tom, could, could you somehow encapsulate what I'm trying to say, maybe in a better way, that we're not talking about business here. We're talking about life and death, okay? We're talking the difference between having to settle for some schlock doctor and being able to get better medical care because there's a standard in this country set up by the medical system. Would you explain that to him, Tom? To tell you the truth, I've just uh, been so busy looking, you know, checking out uh, the Kevin Meany story. I toned out from this whole argument. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, I understand. How about you, Jeff? Could you explain well, it to Phil? Yeah, I'm going to say a little bit about this. Uh, as far as what I would recommend Phil to do is, A, you should go to your Kaiser and you should show them all the documents that you found about the alternate procedures that's done in uh, Stanford or wherever it's done yeah. and show them the statistics and bring it into them and, and you have to talk to their their management group okay and you'll you'll find there is there's usually somewhere a, a nurse who actually makes those final decisions whether or not you are really the one needed that kind of procedure and whether or not they have the equipment to do it and whether or not it's within the, their agreement financially. Yeah, and, and I may, am I wrong about this, Jeff, but if he has like Kaiser, which is a uh, HMO, See? essentially, yeah. if he needs something somewhere else that they don't have, don't they cover things like that? Don't, uh, you know, uh, They were going to send me to John Muir for the radiation. Uh, John, uh, John Muir's uh, hospital and another uh, group of uh, pr a private private hospital. So, uh, so that they, answered your question. But did they? But have, did it was for radiation, not for proton therapy. Hmm. And uh, well, what David that showed me was how superior that was, and, <clears throat> and it's, it's a new therapy, and uh, it's far superior to uh, the. I, I guess there. Well, uh, all, all I've got to point to, uh, Phil, is is David here who a couple of years ago when we first heard about his medical situation, we were talking to a very sick man. Would you not agree with that, David? Yes. And well, he's still and sick. Let me he finish. Like let me, me finish. Let me finish. Nobody <laughs> likes you. <laughs> yeah, that's why. He's kind of like Trump. Um, I like you, Phil. I do. I don't agree with anything, but I like him. Yeah, You're a nice guy. I think we all like each other. Well, I don't. I think he's a nice guy up to a point. I don't think he gives a shit about his fellow man. 
I think that's the problem. That's, I think he does. I, I, but in a different way. Like uh, he thinks it be, should be taken care of a different way. But I think he's naive in that. Uh, big business doesn't give a flying fuck about you or me or anyone else. Trickle down economics. Yes. Give the give the breaks to the guys at the top. It's not going to funnel down. It's going to funnel into the stock. Let price. me give you an example of something of something in my life. Okay. Uh, a girlfriend would like to eventually retire. She's got a medical plan at work. That takes care of our uh, extra 20%, you know, because uh, Medicare takes care of 80%. The other 20%, you have to go get, like, supplemental insurance, and it becomes our supplemental insurance. When she's no longer working there, we have to go get supplemental insurance. And uh, do, you have, do you have supplemental, Jeff? I sure do. And, and what do you have? You have probably ARP, right? Right. How much is that? How much is now? You live. You live where again? In Connecticut. In Connecticut. How much <laughs> is your is your is your ARP costing you a month? I don't know. I, really? Because yeah, I think it's somewhere around financial wife. It's somewhere around two hundred to three hundred dollars a week. No, I mean a month. A month. Yeah, I would assume so. Yeah. So what happens is you're paying a hundred for Medicare, but the, for eighty percent, but for twenty percent. You're having to put out another two hundred dollars a month. I mean, the trouble with Medicare in this country, in my opinion, is it should take care of a hundred percent. Where do you think that money comes from? The money comes from me because I've been paying taxes all these years, and because I've been paying into the Social Security system. Your government, and I have been paying. I have been paying a tax every month on my income for Medicare. Your government spent that money. They don't have Well, it. I don't give a shit. Spent. I want they, my, they I, would have it if they didn't spend uh, like uh, 50% of all taxes for military. There you go. I was just going to say that. They stole money. They stole money, they sto they stole money. money from uh, from social security. That's, that's the past. Today is today. Well, no, we, you, no, you no, well, well, let's, well, let's, let's slam all those those congressmen and senators who voted for that kind of thing in Box. jail. I'm happy with that. That's why I say. Anyway, here, here's, here's the here's the po here's the point I'm making. I paid into Medicare. They owe me Medicare. Okay, well, I paid into Social they Security. They off. they owe me Social Security. And, and don't you dare fucking at any time call it an entitlement. It's not it. Don't it's a contract. Think they it's a contract and it's money you. I'm due. You just, you just found out that they took you for the money. You got ripped off. You know, just face face life. Nobody's going to come save you. You got ripped off, and so did the American people. And they're going to continue to rip you off if you let the government continue to control things like health care. They're just going to bend you over, and they're going to stick it in. And they're not going to say, did you enjoy it? Hmm. All right? Well, okay, that's what they're going to do. Is there Vaseline covered under Medicare? No Vaseline. That's an additional cost. Oh. <laughs> you gotta go out network. I just noticed that if you're watching the show, it says signal lost where my camera is concerned. And I don't know why that happened, but let me go check it out to get it going again. Uh, view. Um, keep talking, folks, while I try to while I try to work this thing out. That's that's a real pity because you know if they lost the spot where we were pointing fingers at one another, that 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 was classic. Yeah, stuff. yeah, but it just said lost, uh, lost. Oh, signal. Phil, the Daily News had a big piece on Trump. They got him buried. Oh, uh, yeah, that's actually pretty I, good. I thought Jeff uh, Meany, Kevin Meany, was dead. I didn't know Trump was dead. Is he buried? He's a good issue. Yeah, what, what do they do now? I haven't read the news today. Mm -hmm. Well, they just pretty much have a hit piece on him today, how he shouldn't be president or near the White House. And they go into the whole thing of what he did. His death. What's that word that Alex calls? Demogivery or whatever? Excuse me, folks, if you see stuff on the screen, because I'm trying to get my uh, my video going right but here. But here's the question. Yeah, we we this, what done. can we do then? Hmm? they got to be able to get something to work that's feasible. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's, well, I understand Trump has already uh, ordered a uh, 60 foot gold T for the front of the White House. Oh, you know, and, and to be yeah, mounted yeah. Over, the, uh, the, uh, over the door. He's hmm. going to put gold fl gold flake on the on the white columns in front. I like it. He's going to have a butler? Well, He'll make Rosie the butler. Snake <laughs> servants. Come on now, work for me. 
Yeah, the, the, you know, perhaps if they fire the White House butler. Did you see that movie where the guy was the White House butler for many, many, many presidents? Yes. The butler? <laughs> it was called the butler, right? The butler, yeah. And so Trump comes in, fires that guy, brings in his own butler. That'll be just as big a, a, an upset as when the Clintons came in and fired the post office people and put their people in, you know? Listen to this stuff, and I'm going to ask Rob this to everybody. Can, I mean, I don't want this to happen, but can you imagine that night if he does pull off an upset? How would the American, how would the American party would like to see the American people go crazy? But it would be like total anarchy, I bet you. Would they go crazy in the street? No, there's 47 percent of us that want it. David, do you have an extra bedroom just in case? <laughs> I think they would go nuts. For you, Rob, I got. Extra bedroom. Yeah. There you go. I'll, I'll you, have, you, have, you have to stay with David's dad, and he'll turn off. He's your energy in the street. There's, right there. there's no internet, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know. Well, you know, it's it's the Bill, secure, like I, I still so recommend you that there's a, another alternate to your medical problem, yeah. and that is that where are you working on what I call a new procedure, which is not easily used by a lot of companies right. or a lot of hospitals. I would go to the biggest university that you have. That's just Stanford, I think. Stanford, because those guys usually have tremendous amount of government grants to do research on that, which means they're looking for patients like you hmm. to see if, if uh, you're a sucker or not, or whether or not you're a winner. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, what, David, uh, what David's data showed me was this machine cost $200 million, and there's 14 of them around the United States, uh, Scripps, uh, Stanford. Um, That's where you got to go. Yeah, and uh, so, yeah, I figured Stanford's easy. I, it's an hour's drive, right. and the thing is you have to go. The treatment is uh, over 10 days. It's five times they shoot you and uh, with the, with the uh, rays, and uh, it's every other day. So um, it just made sense to go there uh, because, I, you know, they even said you can go back to work, uh, you, you, know, right, you know, right after you you get uh, shot with the protons. Well, I mean, well, wait a minute. I don't think it was true with David. Let me I'll just say to the people now, I've, I've put, done a temporary fix here, and the part of the fix is you guys are not going to see me. You're just going to hear me, okay? Wow. All right. The audience can see me, but, you know. Uh, all, well, all the other things. thing that I, I might recommend for you, yeah. since you like uh, scuba diving and stuff like that, go, well. go to Australia. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you, their uh, medication, if they have that equipment, which yeah. is very likely that they have it in Sydney, yeah. and, uh, and their uh, cost of medical stuff is absolutely 100% free for anybody who comes there. Really? And they get great diving in the world. Yeah. Well, uh, so, and all this is diving is cost uh, for this one nine hundred ninety five dollar trip. Uh, so far, I've spent more money getting prepared for it than it would have cost me to get the proton therapy. But the reason I have Kaiser is that all my employees wanted Kaiser, so I have Kaiser for everybody. And uh, so you know, I uh, you know that's why I have it. Yeah. And, well, I, it's my friend Bubbles used to uh, uh, we used to have Kaiser as an advertiser. Know. And one morning he said, so be sure to use Kaiser, blah, 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 better known as Doctor Assisted Suicide. <laughs> and that was the last we heard from them as a sponsor. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, uh, Kaiser used to be a great thing. You, you know how, how Kaiser started. It was Henry J. Kaiser, the uh, magnet who uh, actually put out an automobile called the Henry J., I had and, one. And, my first and was, I think it was wasn't wasn't he aluminum? I think that was yes. his big yes. big thing. Kaiser aluminum. Yeah, you can still buy Kaiser aluminum foil and steel and steel. Yeah. Uh, and and, and Richmond is where they made. And stuff. so he he was very unsatisfied with all the medical plans and so on. So he started literally a hospital for his workers. Yeah, it was called I Kaiser. He was dissatisfied because of the cost, and he figured he could do it himself. Based on the number of well, workers. he also felt he, he wanted to he wanted to give his his employees the best medical care they could get, and so he created this thing. Now that's how it started, and then I remember I became a member of Kaiser with my parents because all of a sudden he started letting union members 
join. Mm-hmm. It was kind of like the Costco of. Uh, now, now they're letting Jews join. That, now, and and so then it became, you know, if you were a member of a union. So my parent, my father joined it because it was inexpensive, and we got full service. I mean, it was really amazing. But what's happened is over the years, they've gone from being that kind of thing, which was actually socialized medicine, privately operated socialized medicine, but socialized medicine because nobody paid for anything. Uh, well, I think my somebody pay, paid. Kaiser paid. Kaiser paid. Uh, I think when it, when they started bringing unions in, the people, members had to pay a certain amount, or maybe their union paid into it. Uh, and uh, but as the years went on, we it started becoming profit making insurance, and all of a sudden you had the HMOs, and it became an HMO. And well, now it's the it's it's a shitty medical system. Several years but, but, ago, uh, Tom, Tom, me. do you want to say something? Because you look like you were moving in to say something. Yeah. Uh, several years ago, no, no wait, uh, I asked Tom. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you want to say something? <laughs> I, I didn't oh, see. Hi, Alex. Yeah. Yeah, Alex. Actually, I do have something. Yeah. Um, and that is the Hollywood Reporter. Yeah. Uh, says that uh, Meany's agent confirmed that he was found in his home in uh, Forestburg, uh, New York. Uh, it was said said that he was found unresponsive. Oh no! And that's all it's saying. He's he died in his home. He was found unresponsive, and an autopsy autopsy is pending. Wow, wow. <sighs> well, anyway, b- back to this discussion. David, you want to join in here? You want to say something? Isn't this, this seem like a stupid discussion? If you're somebody in a country that just gives absolutely you absolutely, med- it's stupid discussion. And I mean, I, I. I like Phil, but to hear him talk it makes me nauseous. <laughs> well, I mean, if it wasn't for the Germans, David, you'd be paying for that health care. If you didn't have talking the about benefactors what, what, as benefactors. No, 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 no. You, you've got, again, Phil, you've got, you've got your history crazy. wrong. You've got your history wrong. He's in Czechoslovakia. The know, reason the it, national health system started in England was after the war, they decided to give themselves a gift. And that's what they gave themselves. A gift that keeps on taking. You, and it's been very successful. Tell them how successful uh, the British health system is, David. It's very successful. And if you want to pay for something better, you can pay in, in the UK. If yeah, you don't like the health care system, you can pay $1,000 a month. If you don't want to be in line for something for two or three years, you come to the United States and you pay for it. And then you get the service. And those are the extremely wealthy, right? And also, I'd those like to know. Wealthy. I'd like to know the last time you heard about a British citizen coming over here for health care. Uh, I haven't been. You're following. only referencing what you've heard happens in Canada, and Canadians are not pouring over the border to get into our health system. They're bringing in drugs. They're worst rapists. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. uh, that, that I agree with you about Canada on that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, let me ask. Let me, they're trying to grab you by the pussy. Yeah, uh, uh, David. Let me ask you. At least they apologize. After we're, we're now almost uh, over our our long national nightmare, and it should be over. And well, it has to be over in about a week and a half. Uh, how are people looking at it in your part of the world? I mean, do they feel Hillary is going to be the winner? Yes, of course. But they say like that it's uh, less evil. Yeah, but are we are we still perceived as being a bunch of fucking idiots because Trump Absolutely. even Trump and, was even allowed to run in the first place? Like if you're if if you speak English and you're from Canada, hello Jim, mm-hmm. you have to have a some kind of sign or a tag or a badge that you're Canadian mm-hmm. because if, if you are an American, people make fun of you. Some restaurants wouldn't serve you. That's what happened. Fuck them. Some restaurants oh, won't. Them. They, they, they don't like Americans now. 20 I don't years like ago, them. Shut up, Phil. Yeah, shut up, Phil, because I want them yeah. to like me. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. They like, don't like you either. Like George, George W. Bush fucked it up so badly. Now this fucking idiot Trump, you know, running for president, this asshole. People make fun of, fun so of Americans. The- so for the last eight years, 
uh, Obama didn't uh, didn't change their minds. Uh, well, let me ask so, David that question. What did they think of Obama over there, David? Like I would say, like that, seventy percent of people uh, think that Obama was much better than George W. Bush. So what's the problem here now? Why the problem he... is that he couldn't he couldn't done anything because of your fucking Republicans didn't didn't let him do anything. Doesn't That's matter. Why. It's it, you know it has no influence. What what it is is their perception of America. You're saying is all based on a negative on George W. Bush's administration, but now Obama's been here for almost eight years, and uh, you know they still hate us. And it doesn't matter who you have in the White House. You know we could have Genghis Khan. Uh, when, when, when Clinton was in White House, everybody they hated. Was, no, they they loved, loved Clinton. Uh, yeah, uh, I, yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, and also, you know, in Bosnia and Herzegovina and all those places where he went in and there was, uh, you know, he's having the war there. Uh, they weren't very happy with Clinton. You know, there, there was, there was, there was no love for this country there, and it you never has Phil, been. And Phil, I feel it's not true. It's just our Trying it's to make them our friends. You, know, you live in a dream world. Let me, let me say you, something. You're fucking insane, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> I live in a split level head. That's why I'm glad you called, David, because I like the way you put it. You're fucking insane, Phil. Hey, Alex, 30 days, half September, April, June, and no wonder. All the rest have peanut butter, all except my dear grandmother. I have a little red tricycle, and I stole it. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> yeah. uh, Napoleon the 14th. What, what, what was that all about? How did that, right. what was that it's even crazy. Crazy. It's supposed to be a crazy... Uh, Ever since you passed the kidney stones, he's changed personas, Alan. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, that was his brain that came out in the mesh. Oh, oh uh, Alan, so much. Hey, did you hear that? Alex admitted I had a brain. <laughs> yeah, true. Uh, uh, but David, you know, the thing that is terrible about all of this is, yeah. number one, the perception of us in the world that this do, this asshole could even get nominated. What's that? What is it? Be, because, be, because, what was that sound? I'm sorry, that was Coco when I told I put myself on mute. Put her. Okay. Kill her. I put her a ghost. That <laughs> speaks. I'm uh, do me a favor, Tony. Gas that dog, will you? I'm sorry, I'll put my Now David wants to kill one of the little children. Yeah, anyway, anyway, uh, <laughs> he has done irreparable damage to this country just by running. The, exactly. the, the damage that he's done to this country internally is going to be felt for oh, yeah. years to come. The <laughs> hatreds that have been created, the sense of permissiveness that he's put out there, and then on top of that, our image in the world that a certain amount of this population would actually nominate this guy to be president of the United States is insane. Our you image know, the world hasn't changed. It's not true. Boy, yeah, I, I don't, don't, how can you say anybody, that, Phil? David's living in that other part of the world. <laughs> yeah. Anybody, like in England that, or uh, in Germany, is. it's unbelievable what's going on. This I can't tell one one year of Trump is going to ch is is has made that much of a difference into the amount of hate that the rest of the world has for the, our way of living. You know, uh, it, it, we have kind of, kind of Johnson, Nixon. Shut up. Forward. Oh, Phil, 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 shut up and 40, listen to David. Forty-four percent people going bankrupt because of healthcare in the United States. What kind of living is that? Wake up, Phil. You're insane. David, you it's very simple. Just ask him if they'll take a check. You know, you, 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 you know, know, I, 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 know listen. Your way, your way of trying to answer something is telling a joke, and I'm sorry, because, I'm but he's sorry. But it's moronic. No, it's not he's moronic. Saying, it's not he's... your fucking moron, Phil. But Phil, yeah. how, how is it that in the uh, industrialized countries of the world, there are only two countries that don't have universal health care? Only and two. One and number two economies in the world. It's the United States. Number one and number two economies And in China. The world. And China's working on it. Number one and number two economies yes, in the world. And, and oh, soon Adam. China will have universal health care. We'll see. We're, we're, we're lucky that China... You know, that's not an answer, Phil. Breathe. That's not a logical answer. They're going to need universal health care because they can't breathe the air there. No. You know? 
They do smoke a lot, the Chinese. No, they don't. That it's has nothing to do with it. Industrial waste. Oh, that's a fact. It's okay. And, yeah. I mean, you're, to, you're thinking like the, the way of American living. What kind of way is that? I mean, explain to me. What is great about the was, American way? It was a lot better before Obama. Oh, really? Come on, Phil. Yeah. He has been that bad. Oh, you're going to tell me What's life was bad? terrific under George W. Bush, that fucking asshole moron with his Nazis heading up the, the government? Broke. What? It, it was until the bubble broke. You know, when you had uh, you know, money that you could borrow and homes that were going up in value. Okay. Uh, uh, why, don't you, why don't you shut why don't you, why don't you breathe some air for a little while because you've been talking more than anybody else tonight. Fine, no and, problem. And let's let some of the other people join in. Jeff, some of your thoughts. Well, I definitely uh, very curious as to what was the great things that uh, that Bush accomplished, other than uh, spend billions and billions of dollars on well, a, well, on a you, war that we didn't need to do. You do remember that when we we should all remember that when Clinton. Uh, left office we actually didn't have a debt we had a, we had we had money in the bank yes surplus, yeah. a surplus way to a balanced budget a and by the time george w bush left forget about that surplus it was now uh, uh, what nine billion dollars in debt so how was that good phil <clears throat> how is that american way now good i'm uh i'm letting you breathe the air yeah well, I mean, I but I just asked you a question, so, uh, you know. Okay, so I'll just take myself off mute. Um, it was good until the bubble broke, but there was... Uh, there what was, was so good about it? So, well, there was, there was high, high employment, uh, people were making money, they were investing in the stock market and so forth, but what we had was a bunch of greedy people on Wall Street that fucked the American people, and they did it with the permission and the guidance of our U.S. government. So if you're going to blame somebody, blame the government. They're the ones that fucked us. And, you know... Would, would George Bush be part of that group? They're all part See, of it. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Yes. So, so how They're do you... Oh, and so Trump is going to solve the problem. He's not part of it. Uh, uh, well, neither, says, neither, neither, uh, neither of the... Th wait a minute. Neither of the, neither, neither the three stooges, but I wouldn't want them for president either. Well, you know, uh, maybe they, we'd be better off than a bunch of crooks that are oh, selling... Because, because he's a businessman. That's what he means. Because he's a businessman. They're a bunch well, of crooks. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Donald bought. Trump is a crook. Donald Trump says he won't be bought. Donald Trump is a crook. He's got made crooked hey, deals he, all his life to get where he is. Or where he isn't. He's a liar isn't. and a crook. He's a liar and a crook. Well, Not a he's a liar and a crook, but a liar and a crook. Then maybe he'll fit in beautifully with the people. Uh, no, no, now you're country. making a joke again. I'm, well, I'm, that's you're true. saying you're saying you don't like the people in Washington because they're crooks, and yes. I'm saying that Donald Trump is as big a crook as the rest of them. He just didn't do it in the same uh, arena. Well, it's a pathological you know? liar, and and he and he tells people. I mean, he's walking around telling people, "We're gonna win." Yeah. And he's telling people all you these things. You, you, so so you, you don't win without visualization. Uh -huh. You've got to he's visualize winning. winning. Yeah, well, he it's better visualize so. winning because that's all he's going to get come uh, a couple of Tuesdays. Yeah, he's from he's that may be the case, but you know the difference between gold and silver, the person that wins gold and the person that wins silver? The difference could be a thousandth of a second. That's all it takes. And if you have what it takes to do I that am, little bit extra, you'll win gold, okay, not okay, silver. Okay, now let me talk to the other people. Uh, okay. Je Jeff, would you agree with me? I think that come two Tuesdays from now, it's going to be a rout. Yes. Absolutely. And, and I, I don't know what this man thinks he's doing. This thing last night at the Al Smith dinner <laughs> was suicide. Absolutely. He and he, did you see Al? I think it was Al Smith's kid or somebody who was sitting in back of Trump when he started calling Hillary a crook and the look on this guy's face. Yep. I mean, and people were booing him last night. He, if he was trying to not win the election, he put the nail in his coffin last night. Why? You know.
Did, did he really think he was making a good move here? Alice? Uh, yes, Chris. Uh, Charlene. You know, I think I heard on the news, I didn't see the story, but now he's. they say he he's really doing it again. He said some real derogatory stuff about Michelle and Barack Obama again. I don't know what he said, though. I didn't uh, get to hear that. He, but they say he's he's he, doing it again, he, like putting his... He you know, doesn't, the nails in his coffin he doesn't spend any time saying what he's going to do for this country. He just keeps insulting people. Right. You don't listen. I Come listen. I listen. I have the TV set on all day, and they run all his speeches. And there's he has no plans. He he's just says, build the wall. Well, we're gonna, I'm, he says there. what every politician is going to make. I'm going to bring back jobs to America. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. But he doesn't ever say and here's how i'm going to do it but i'll let you know once i'm elected who said that there was somebody else that way too didn't, didn't was nixon it, was it nixon who said i have a plan to get us oh, out yeah. of the war yeah. in vietnam and, and when they said how are you going to do that he said well i'll let you know when i get elected yeah he'll just uh you know. you know what were you saying jeff uh nixon said he didn't want to tell you yeah you know, I'll tell you when you're president. When I'm president. Yeah, and when he got to be president, he didn't tell us for four years, <coughs> and then he finally did it. And I'll have it fixed in like. And what it was calling was cut. Weeks. What it was called was cut and running. There was a lot of people making money on that war, and he couldn't get out because you know uh, that all his constituents were making money. Yeah. And uh, and so you know they stayed there. It, it was uh, it was too tasty to leave. And uh, you know he was pretty much what, what, what forced. Kind of, what kind of cough medicine have you been drinking lately? <laughs> You know, there was the people that sold the boots, the people that sold the weapons, the people that sold But they're all the Trump. same people who always make money off of war. Right. And they're the same people that are running our government yeah, and listen, now. Listen, they make money off peacetime. You don't think they Chick have to replace all those missiles that are in silos? Look at your buddy Cheney. You mean Dick Cheney? He made all that money. Yeah. yeah. And you and you were happy to have him as your vice president. Yeah. You said he was Andrew wonderful. Obama. In comparison to Obama, yeah. Because uh, I, I, I like putting people to work. I like, you know, if we build bombs and we build tanks, I don't like using them on people, but I like building them. Do you think it's really healthy, either emotionally or morally, to have a country whose entire welfare is based upon being at war? Uh, I think it's uh, having a strong defense keeps us at peace. Uh, well, uh, would you say Britain has a strong defense? No. No. No, if it wasn't for the Americans, Britain would be uh, oh, oh, uh, uh, talking uh, German. Oh, right. oh, oh. You're talking about it's, World War II. Oh, it's, right. it's, 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 wait a minute. I, 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 I heard David uh, j chiming I, I, in. David? I, I, I can't. I can't handle it. It's not absolutely uh, true. Uh, absolutely. Uh, okay, you just oh, lost Tom. Um, I don't, I don't no, want to no, stay no, in this conversation it's anyway. Not, it's not anybody. You're, you're it's talking about stupid. Um, I don't, I don't want to stay in this conversation anyway. So, you know, you're welcome. No, he, he said goodbye. Sorry. Right. So we lost one. Of course, who wants to listen to this bullshit? <laughs> you asked. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. I, I just it. thought the same thing. He's talking about World War II. Well, it doesn't matter. You know, that's it's only 65, 70 okay. years ago. Which is, which is what Trump does. He tries to make it like it's World War II, and he's going to make America great again. Yeah. Well, yeah. We're still fighting that war. Well, um, let, I want oh, to yes. talk a little bit about Jeff. the reality of getting jobs and in improving our economy and things like that. You gotta understand that the reason that our economy is, is somewhat, uh, what I wanna say, thin, okay? A lot of it has to do with a thing called automation, computerization, mm -hmm. okay? There, there used to be thousands and thousands of jobs which no longer exist. And, and you know what? No matter what Trump does or what Clinton does, it's not going to change it. Absolutely. And I don't know what the if there is an answer. Yes, there is. Oh, oh. New technologies, alternative fuels, new new ways yeah. to you know new ways to to come to market with things. That's you know we we should be leaders in those areas. How do we build our buildings? Uh, what do we use as a main uh, uh, construction material? Concrete. So where you live? Steel, right? Uh, how much steel is made in the United States? I, I really yeah. couldn't tell you. There is Very little. And the reason that it's not made in the United States is it's cheaper to get it from China. 
Mm-hmm. Now, uh, and that's and, where that's where Donald Trump goes to get all his steel. That's, that's, that's correct. correct. Yeah, that's correct. But if you want to bring jobs back to this country, you have to have a production of the raw materials that make the items that we use to to create our lifestyle. Phil, Phil, you have to do that work. Who wants to go and do that? that work? Exactly. Yeah, people. There's all people over in Ohio. One of the reasons. And, and Pennsylvania. One of the reasons. One of the reasons. Uh, you're, 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 uh, Phil, you're you're talking out of your ass on that one. All right. <laughs> really, I'm serious because. Uh, uh, part of the problem and part of the thing that, that, that uh, has uh, vexed a lot of industries in this country is they'd like to produce more in this country, but they can't find enough people to man the, uh, man the factories. How about all the people that are out of work that would love to do something? Uh, they don't want those jobs. No, no. They, they, they want the jobs that the Mexicans are taking. Come on. Oh, no. You're crazy. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah it, uh, 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 David. What, uh, what uh, in your country? Uh, do you have a problem with outsourcing of materials, uh, or are there laws that force companies to use materials produced in the country? No, thanks God, we don't have this problem because we are part of EU. Uh huh. And and in and that we have we have problems with workers because of course we've got many jobs nobody wants to do. So we've got people from Ukraine coming, do it under the table. Yeah. Hey, do people get paid in your country regardless of whether they work or not? Yes, they get paid. Well, then that's why they don't want to work. No, no, no. Did, did you, you, do they get paid regardless of whether they work or not, David? Yes. Wow. Yes, but, but look at it differently. Uh, I think I think what he just said is correct, but the reality is, if the job is lost, they try to retrain you to do a different job, or a better job, or at least a, a better job down down the street. Um, and I think that's that's very much part of uh, Germany uh, did that stuff for the last twenty thirty years. And, and that's why they were very strong about making German cars in their country. And then ultimately, they got to the point where, uh, it, it again, it became economic to, to make their cars, part of them in the United States, part of them in Brazil, part of them in, in uh, Spain or wherever. Uh, but... Taxes. But... They always decided never to do too much that they would lose all of the Germans. Okay, I don't want to deflect, but uh, if I mention Japan as a, uh, as a trading partner, uh, you know, I know that's not in the EU, but in Japan, how many American cars are brought over there uh, yearly? And uh, and and do we even uh, are we able to sell very few very few Japan? very few cars are, Ice? very few cars are brought over here from Japan uh, brought to Japan no. from the United States well there are also very few cars brought from Japan to the United States my car came from Japan no to the United your States. car probably came from Fremont California David. where it was assembled with parts made in Japan now David F J Cruiser. Yeah, FJ, FJ Cruiser is, is completely built in Japan. Right. Okay. Yes. And that's but most of the Toyotas are made in Indiana or Kentucky. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yes, Tony. You know, here's a question. Let's say, even though I think he had a good point, the other guy. I forgot his name, the new guy. The new guy? Jeff. Oh, you mean uh, Jeff? Is it Jeff? Yeah. I, sorry, yeah. Yeah. I forgot his name offhand. Yeah. He's know. hardly new. He's in his 70s. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Well, you know, he, he has a good point where he says the jobs are lost. Like for me, an example. I know I only work in a warehouse, but I kind of try to watch what goes on. And I'm going to tell you something. I could be wrong about this. I mean, at least in the business that I'm working in now, they don't care if it's made in the United States. These people, because they got a boat coming in now. They they sell the stuff in China. It's all about markup. So, I, but I, I could be wrong. This whole oh, we got to have it made here. No, they don't. Because they're going to make a bigger markup here on the stuff in China. It just depends if the store owner wants the Chinese merchandise. So I think, you know what I think, Alex? I think it's what you said, Alex. The, the people who own the businesses are greedy. 
They want to they wanna basically say, they don't care if it's made here. That's all bullshit. All right, Phil, you bought your car, it was made in China. But on the same hand, he bought it from a dealership here in the United States. So they still have a job. Here. Yeah, and all those companies, by the way, in Detroit, uh, the factories in Detroit have been they closed are. down, and they're making them in Mexico now. So now I see what you're saying. How do you get all those right. jobs back? I don't know if you could. What? If they can make them in Mexico, they can make them here. And, you know, if they made them here... Not as cheap as they, they, not as cheap as they can make them in Mexico, but if you think they're going to lower the price on them, you're nuts. Exactly. They're, they're, the price. Price. Exactly. they're doing it for pure... Cheap. They're do, And they're, 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 therein is your competition, Phil. Yes. Exactly. There's your competitive you edge, price. Phil. That's right. Yeah. You need to have competition. We'll keep the price down. They won't make so much. Money. Oh yeah, how and the cars prices have been are, are, are have been dropping like a rock, right? Because of all the competition. Well, uh, no, because of all the government regulation. Uh, yeah, that yeah. causes them to. Uh, uh, you know what I, I, what I love about Phil? Because they're trying to yeah. kill off uh, fossil fuel cars. And, and uh, they should so they, and they should so kill off fossil the, the, fuel cars if we can do it, but I don't think we're going to do it in our lifetime. You know, well, I think there'll be uh, self-driving cars before we kill off. Fossil. You know, David, oh, yeah. it's another Toyota out there that I like, and as soon as they have enough of the filling stations for them, I'm just thinking about getting one. It's called a Mirai, and mm -hmm. that's a hydrogen cell car. Yeah, well, you, good luck on all your gas stations having hydrogen cells. Well, I'm not going to get one now. I'm hoping sure. get, but now, in your lifetime, gas stations are not going to have that. Gas stations are only used to one thing, yeah. pumping gas. Well, they, they pump you know, diesel now. So. The, you know, and if you're we're talking about electricity, how long does it take for a car to charge, even if it's a fast charge? It's not electricity. It's water. It's uh, hydrogen. No, no, water. I'm not talking about that now. I changed to uh, electricity. Huh. To in the electric cars, how long does it take, at the least, to fully yeah. charge one of those automobiles? Like twelve hours. Yeah. Fully charged. So let's say you're out on a Sunday and you've had a picnic and you drove around. Oh my God, I'm low on fuel. I better pull into the gas station for twelve hours and plug into a that's, wall. That's hundred percent electric car. But if you look at a Prius, uh, when you put on the brakes, it charges the battery. So. Yeah. Uh, you use much less gas. I, I understand what a hybrid is, Phil. You don't have to tell me. There were also 100% electric well, cars like, like, like the Tesla. Leaf is 100% electric. The Volt as well. The, the Volt. The, Volt. The, Volt. The, the Tesla has a 300 mile range. And you even know? the Volt has a motor. Yeah. It's 100% electric, yeah. but it does have a motor and it does kick in. I don't think the Tesla has a motor. No, no that's a, it's all electric. I drove a Volt. A friend of mine let me drive his Volt. Yeah. Did it drive oh, you nuts oh. that there wasn't any sound? Yeah, it's it's complete. It's like driving a golf cart. Yeah. yeah. About the Chevy Volt. Yeah, the Chevy Volt. Yeah, that has a, a small engine. Yeah. I forget what size. One point two liters. It's tiny. Like it's tiny. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you need it, and and basically the big problem with it is, and according to the person who owns it, he told me that in extreme weather it's not great because you know it's the electric car, right? So it's never too warm in the winter and never too cool in the summer when you when you need the air conditioning and the heating. So that's oh, the if you add the air conditioning, that's got to suck up a lot of the uh, power. Well, yeah, and he said and the price is high. Although the Prius uh, had a great in, uh, air conditioning, and uh, we're talking the, there about power. you see, you're going back and forth though. The, yeah. Volt, the Volt has an engine too, didn't you? Just hear Jeff what he said. It's different though; it doesn't kick in as frequently as a as a as a like a hybrid does. A hybrid kicks like, in. Prius off. is much much better option. The what is a better it's option? Prius. Toyota Prius is well, I mean, a a, a a hybrid is better, but you know, I rented a hybrid a few years back. And it got, I think, about 32 miles to the gallon. And it was a mid-sized car. That's okay. it? Yeah, 32 miles Oops. to the gallon. And, and it was a, it, it was a uh, I can't remember the brand, but it was a, it was a, uh, a hybrid. And, was it, and uh, 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 well, wait a minute. Let me finish what I'm saying here, Phil. Uh, and I couldn't figure out why. I thought it, I'd get like 50 miles to the gallon, right? And I wasn't getting anything near to that. I think well, when you when you have the small cars, the little you know rice burners, and you have them uh, as a, uh, a hybrid, they will get you know forty miles to the gallon, forty five miles to the gallon. But when you get a mid-sized car, that's not true. 
I have a friend with a Prius, and I have another friend with a Prius. The one, the Dave, the guy with the Prius, he's able to get 55 miles a gallon out of it. The other guy gets uh, 38 to 40. Why? It's because of the way they drive it and uh, the speeds that they do and, and so forth. Uh, you know, Dave was able to, uh, he'd drive it like he had an egg under his foot. And he'd watch that computer uh, because it was a challenge to him to try to get more miles per gallon. And, uh, and you can do it. It's just uh, how you do it. Yeah. yeah, well, I don't care. I don't own a car. Jeff. My wife has a Prius. She has 185,000 miles on that car. Wow. And uh, it's, it still works pretty damn good. Did you at any time, you, you had to change the battery or something? No, no, no. Wow. No? They have like a 100,000 mile guarantee on the battery. That's right. And then, and I, I, I talked to a lot of other people about it and say, have you had to buy a lot of batteries? And this is, nobody, nobody's done it. And the other part is the brakes are fantastic because they're using the uh, electrical uh, generation to actually reduce the brakes. Well, I don't. So the, I, I, you know, the, yeah. the, the Prius is, is a really brilliant car. Absolutely, uh, it yes. is not great at certain things. Do you have one? Do you have high one? temperatures yeah. and real and when a lot of snow doesn't yeah. work too well. David, you you were yeah. saying something. You you what do you what what do you have in uh, in uh, Czech Republic? Oh, we have we okay. have Škoda, which is which yeah. is Czech car, but my wife drives Prius in England. Mm -hmm. Nice car. Very nice car. I can only recommend it. And now they make that bigger one. The big one, yeah. Prius. Wagon, four, four it's, door. It's, it's fantastic. Yeah. It's like little SUV. Well, now, why, why is the Tesla so uh, revered? Expensive. Or, or is, it, is, it, is it just not it's revered? It's very luxurious. Huh? It's yes. very luxurious. And uh, I, I assume it's well made. And plus, uh, it's got a... Uh, uh, when they first came out, they were using the Lotus body. Uh, and uh, it was a two-seater sports car, very, very fast. And so that was the first Tesla model. And then they came out with the Model S, I believe, and that was uh, a sedan. And now they're coming out with another one, which is a smaller version of that. And, and other vehicles, SUVs and things like that, are planned for the future. Uh, so, and, and it had a long range. Their battery technology allowed them to have a longer range than the Leaf and, and other types of uh, uh, fully cars yeah. the and it still takes time to yeah. charge them even if you have a, a quick charge location uh, in Connecticut we have a all on on the highway 95 where there's a gas station on, on the highway there's also a charge place but how long does it take to charge that's my question uh, again. I think it takes the best is, is two hours yeah you know, when you go to Whole Foods in uh, near my house, there's a whole row of charging stations for the uh, electric car. Well, because, oh, hey, uh, Charlene, you're falling asleep. Sorry. You were snoring. <laughs> it, it was because oh. I... <laughs> but uh, it doesn't you know, doesn't it isn't around. isn't good advertising for us for people who are watching the TV <laughs> version of the show to have somebody dozing <laughs> off. The Union Square Garage down in downtown San Francisco. Yeah. They've got all sorts of star uh, charging stations there. Uh, oh, there's a reason for that. It's a, it's, I think a a Tesla, it's a city-run uh, 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 garage. Garage, yeah. Yeah, so probably someone in, in San Francisco, one of these. Uh, you, know what, you know how much does it cost, Tesla? Uh, depends on the model. I think they're between sixty and 80000 but they just came out with a $40,000 one. It's very expensive. Yeah. I, I think they're about eighty. Yeah. Average is like seventy nine thousand. Well, didn't it, recently? Didn't uh, uh, what's his name start having some problems financially because of the uh, Tesla? He, yeah, he was going to borrow money uh, because they're buying some solar company, mm -hmm. and uh, then he said that they didn't need to borrow the money. Uh, but Tesla bought uh, some big solar manufacturer, and matter of uh, you know. And then uh, I guess that solar manufacturer was a financial drain on Tesla. But uh, it seems as though he's come up with the money and he doesn't need uh, the, the bailout. Yeah. Um, and uh, oh, well, now, now, of course, Rob is eating a, 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 driving a gas-guzzling Corvette. It's not so bad. I think I get like 20 miles to the gallon, 19 miles to the gallon. 
Till I step on the gas. Until you step on the gas. I get I built I built you both Ford, Rob. I did. I still. I. I. Uh, but I have a company car now. My job gives me a, a Ford Escape. So is it, that, is it hybrid? No. It's oh. but it's got that pain in the ass thing where every time you put your foot on the brake and you come to a stop, the engine cuts out. Yeah. Uh -huh. I hate that. Built four six eight that they had in the Cadillac. I hate that. It's, it's annoying. It's you, just like, you know what's interesting. I got to tell you this. Um, I saw an item today where IBM has most of the computers at its company now are Macs. And well, yeah, the, and they the, got rid and, of their, uh, they, got, they got out of the, the, well, the hardware business. Yeah, they but the reason they said they did it rather than use PCs is because they found that even though the Mac was more expensive, over the life of the computer, they saved money. They saved like $516 a computer oh. because of the extra life of a, of a Mac over a PC. Yeah, so I still have my MacBook Pro is a 2011. No, listen to what I'm using a 2011 uh, Mac, uh, ma you know, uh, desktop here, yeah. uh, Pro, and uh, I've got another one in the other room that goes back to 2000, I think, seven or okay. six, and it's um, uh, still working really well. You know, yeah. I had to go in there and kind of fix it up, but it, it's working fine. Can you imagine a 10-year-old PC and how it would perform today? Oh, I have an, another computer next to it that's almost as old as the uh, this other computer, and it's crappy. You know, yeah. It's crappy. Are you still awake, Charlene? Yeah, you know, were you guys talking about the Google phones or something the other night? It charges quicker. Uh, because uh, Google now is going to make their own phones or something, right? They, yeah, they, they've had the Android operating system. Mm -hmm. Which is you know given out to uh, 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 other other companies other than uh, than Apple uh, as a competitor to the Apple o operating system, but now they say they're actually going to come out with their own phone. Now, when they've come out with hardware, it hasn't exactly been terrific. Um. You know, like uh, oh hey, uh, what, what, what were the the uh, the Google Glass? Oh, those were wonderful, weren't they? Where are they now? Yeah. Well, they're being used for medical. Uh, they, they've, they've found that, uh, you know, just bringing them out to the public, those were beta testers. But what they're doing now is they're using it in, for medical so doctors can get information uh, right at their, uh, you know, right at their eyes. Uh, yeah, but they can, they can look through their glasses at a computer screen and get the same information. Uh, yeah, but there's a different different way of, of gathering it, and it frees their hands up not to have to use a computer. Hmm. Uh, but you know, th this is this is where they're uh, pursuing a uh, Google Glass. And the only reason I know is that uh, Yoni Mayeri was a uh, Google, uh, uh, a Glass tester, and uh, she got me into one of those Facebook groups for uh, Google Glass testers. So I've been over the years watching what they've been talking about. And, uh, you know, from the retail level and, you know, from the consumer level, it, uh, it wasn't a hit. People would say, take, take it off. I don't want to be photographed and, and so forth. Well, they were beating up people who were using them in bars. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. But uh, for other purposes where they're not out in the public, uh, I think the technology is going to Still, uh, really grow. They, they've never known for building hardware. I think that's where Microsoft for a while was making a mistake. Microsoft made their fortune off of software. Right. And with software, you don't have a problem with warehousing. In other words, if all of a sudden you change your operating system, hey, you throw out all the old disks, you make some new ones, how, ch how expensive is that? Uh, but then they went into making hardware. The first hardware they made was the Xbox. And it took them forever to be able to get into that market. And now they're making computers as well. They're making all those surfaces and things like that, which are, are getting better and better. But it's been a long uphill fight. And who really, it's, it's much better to make software than to make hardware. Yes, Jeff. Well, one of the things like you're talking about cell phones from Google. Yeah. That they're not going to be as good as uh, the Mac stuff. The, part of the reason is it has to do with patents and and. Uh, other companies, including uh, Apple, have some very good patents 
uh, that pro, that uh, doesn't allow Google to do everything, which is what what we might want to call the most efficient method mm-hmm. of either producing it or performing it or using it yeah. or maintaining it or whatever. And uh, and the fact that they're you know like what are they twenty years in in uh, in little Google's you know Google, but they haven't had a product yet until now. This is a, a big change for them. And it's not going to be easy. Mm-hmm. Yes, Charlene? But um, weren't you guys talking about something like you don't have to, like, say, be strictly ATT or Verizon? Like, because I, I was in my Verizon uh, corporate store, and the guy explained that to me that that's this thing with the Google that. Like you don't have to lock into a, a carrier or something. Well, I, I think the, 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 that, right? lock phone. Yeah, it's it's uh, well. I think you still, if you want an, if you want a Google and you want a Google from uh, oh, AT and T, uh, yeah, they'll put, they they charge you a lower price for the phone. They maybe charge you a hundred dollars for an Android. All right, nice. but you have to sign up for two years because they're paying four hundred for that same mm. unit. And they're making the money back off of you. You know, several shows ago, uh, I think, Alex, you had mentioned uh, the BlackBerry and, you know, uh, uh, making sort of a jest about, well, what happened to that technology? BlackBerry was the number one uh, business phone until there was a several-day blackout where the BlackBerry system went down. And when that happened... Everybody made the jump from the BlackBerry system, which was called RIM, I think, yeah. to uh, to more conventional smartphones. Well, they didn't want to be naked. Is what but, they didn't want to be. You know, they wanted to be able to have their thing working when it's supposed to be working. Which, incidentally, today the internet went down quite uh, immensely across the board uh, because of hacking. Yeah. Uh, really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Took down Netflix, Twitter, Reddit. The FBI is actually investigating. Yeah, they, and it was it was a it was a denial of service attack. In which uh, they're worried about uh, the election. They're thinking that this was sort of a tune-up oh, to see what they could do. Uh, you know, because it was they 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 focused on Netflix and Twitter and yeah, but, but those uh, the thing I I don't think that that presents a problem to the election because. Uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, because you're a technical guy, Rob, you work in that field, uh, most of these election p- polling places are not internet um, connected, so That's to right. speak. Well, so what's internet connected is what? the tabulating stuff. Yeah. Right, so right. Oh, all that is internet connected. Mm-hmm. So you're right, the individual polling places so, are not the machines. So what happens? What, let, let's just... For grins, let, for grins, let's just make up a scenario here. Uh, and that scenario is a, uh, a a weird little scenario in which uh, the night of the election, all of a sudden this tampering happens, and somehow we can't get results. They can't get from one place to another. I mean, we have to remember they have to get from the polling place to somewhere else, and that's where the Internet comes in. Is that what you're saying? And, yes. and, and let's say that's tampered with. And it, it's tampered with irreparably. In other words, everything gets scattered to the wind. All, all the information gets... Can we recover from that? Well, the individual machines, I don't know how that works, but you have 50 states who have 50, whatever how many machines that have this information in them. You'd have to, it would take a lot of time to tabulate it, but my, my suggestion would be that they don't, clear those machines out until they know who's a winner because if something does happen at least they still have all the votes in the machines what happens to those states where they don't have a paper trail there are there are about what how, what i read seven eight states or something and they're all major you know electoral states i mean you remember when you were in college and used to take it he used to take a, a number two pencil and 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 cert and color in the the yeah. blips on the that's how they do it in virginia so you go to an you know what's that 
That's how they do it in California, too. Oh, okay, because I'm used to New York where you walk into a booth and you flip switches. Yeah, that doesn't exist anymore. Last time I went, I think I actually, did I maybe fill in squares? I don't remember. Oh, wow, okay, they don't have the voting booths like that anymore. They, they don't have those big, remember the big clunky things where yeah. you used to take the, the raw the thing and move it over, yep. and then you were all alone. Because oh, that they, big bar. And, 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 and like then you flip these flippers up. Yep, and then somehow I don't know that tabulated him behind you. It was actually a black curtain went behind yeah. you. So yeah. you, and and then when you pulled when you pulled the lever, closed the curtain, closed. You would vote, and then when you open the curtain, it reset the board. And there was also the punch card ones, like they had in Florida, where you punched. It was like a pencil that you pushed the through chats, a, right. a plastic holder, and uh, and that that allowed you to cast your your vote. And I guess then they pulled the card out and they put it in a reader. Yeah, yeah. And uh, how did that work for them? Uh, it was good for Bush. Well, it, it's all the computers that made it so they can call a race, you know, before the polls close on the West Coast. So if something were to happen, you would think they would be able to do it the old-fashioned way. Pony Express? Well, I don't know what, you know, if they keep, you know, what, however they did it back in the day. You have to get it from one place to another. How do they do it up in Connecticut, Jeff? I think you you have a, a certain strip, and you you have to somehow it's it's a kind of a fake pen, and you have to write on that what you want to do, and then they take that piece of I'll call it paper. It's not paper. It's a it's like a computer's computer readout disc. Yeah, it's, it's not a disc. It's like a strip. And from that, it gets computerized. Mm. Uh, I don't, you know, I think all of these things have a certain risk of, of having the whole system getting pretty well, screwed up. We've, I think there's always been a risk. You know, people say, well, what if we hack, the, the, what if we hack these computers? Well, what was to prevent in the old days somebody from taking a box of ballots and throwing them in the river? You know, right. they, you wouldn't well, affect it on a grand scale if you but, did but, that. But, uh, you know, I mean, we, people say, well, you know, uh, they say um, Trump is crazy. This election can't be rigged. And uh, I got to tell you, you know, Kennedy's election was uh, was rigged. He won by the 200, uh, 200,000 votes or 20,000 votes in Chicago that were trumped up. I hate to use that term, but trumped up by daily uh, utilizing the uh, the voting abilities of dead people. Right, and uh, that election was very close. You know, and, and I, I understand an election. Uh, you know, you want your election to be fair. You want it to be uh, right. But if they continue to screw with the internet the way they've been screwing with it, they're going to shut down the economy. They're going to shut down our uh, grids for electric. Uh, they, they they could stall. Every business. Yeah, but what are you what are you going to do? Don't don't you don't you like using Amazon? Yeah, I do. I just ordered another. I got another uh, uh, Roku uh, because oh, they awesome. offered me an, uh, the newest model at fifty 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 dollars off. So I figured, what the hell, I can use it anyway. And um, I, I got it really fast. All of yeah. that because I was using computers. Right. Did we want to give that up? I mean, no. we, it, we might I, not have a choice. No, 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 no. Look, there are things that can be done. In fact, we can put up firewalls that what we need to do is we need to take the United States and we need to segment it with very, 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 we need to build a wall. Yes, that's what you have to do. We need to build a wall and it can be done and you're going to see a lot of countries start doing that. And that wall will be, right now there are no walls. It's, but, you know, the idea of security that I see out there it drives me nuts. You know, uh, the other day I was trying to get onto some site of, that I've been going to for quite a while. And, you know, and... and uh, uh, XXX. Uh, no, no, no. I mean, it was something I can't, I can't remember. It was either, it was something like TuneIn or something like Anyway, it doesn't matter what it was. All of a sudden it asked me, well, what's your favorite movie star? I don't know. I never answered that okay. question. And I couldn't get any of these these security questions right because I had never answered them in the first place. 
Yeah. Uh, how many of you have had that happen to you lately? Alex, you should... the guy that stole your account answered those questions. Yeah. yeah. But, but uh, you know, I, I don't think we need to go that far. You should be able to just have your name and password and somehow back at the uh, back at the place that you're doing business with, it should be their job to keep you secure. Well, that's why they've got the chips in, in, in credit cards now. I just got a credit card uh, that has a chip in it, and I was hacked the first day I used it. No kidding. No. It, yeah, the first day I used it. Now, what I think happened was that the establishment that I went in, it was somebody that had one of those card reader things, and uh, they were able to read the chips in your pocket. Oh, uh, oh. Walk past uh, uh, David, 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 we haven't heard, we haven't heard. Boy, I've what? got the slapback going there. Hold on a second. I'm still, yeah, it, I'm still here. Yeah, do 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 you have in uh, in in Czechoslovakia? Do you use the chips in your credit cards? Yes, we do. Yeah, um, does it work fast for you? Yes, it does. Because for me, you put it in and you got to wait like 15 seconds before yeah. it, it does its whole oh, it, process. It works fast. Yeah. David, are they hacking the credit cards in, in the Czech Republic like they do in the States? Are they are they stealing the uh, the credit card informo information, making their own card, and then... Uh, uh, of course, it, it happens everywhere around the world, so it happens mm -hmm. here too. But you know but what? If you, if you go to a restaurant in Europe, they bring you that little machine so yes. nobody can steal your information in the bag somewhere. Right, but what they do have now is they have these card readers that scan uh, the people walking by. They've had those for twenty years, Phil. But that's off the magnetic things. They've now had they those. For, they've had those for twenty. They've also had for, for the last twenty years. If you make a phone call and you use some information, somebody can be sitting right. across the street and getting all of it. What, what right. I'm what I'm saying is is that I think that. Security should be the responsibility of the companies, and they shouldn't have to go to extraordinary circumstances on our end for us to get that security. And is I agree with David. This the, David, the most wonderful the thing. I just, I just want to say one thing about credit cards in, in Europe. Yeah. You still have to have a PIN number, even with credit cards. So it's much, much more difficult That's for somebody. True. To, to steal money from your credit card. You still have to have PIN. Yeah, we have PIN numbers over here when we do stuff online. We don't have it when we go to a restaurant, for instance. And you're right. The thing I loved about Europe was they bring the machine to your table. They don't take okay. your card, go into the back room, and do whatever they're going to do with it. They do that more and more here in restaurants. Um, I've seen it a bunch over the past year. Yeah, yeah me too. Uh, I, I haven't I seen a lot of it other than when, when I was in uh, Italy and Spain. It's very common. I was in Ruth's Chris the other night for uh, the happy hour, and they had the same thing. You stick the card in, they had you you know fill out the stuff, yeah. put your number, uh, and you know right there. It was a little confusing because I'm not. I'll used tell you to what I've what I've found. I used it on a couple of occasions when I've gone into a place like uh, like Best Buy is I've just simply okayed my purchase with my thumbprint from my Apple phone. Yeah, my and the thumbprint is not a bad way to yeah. you know, be able to, uh, I, th I think it's harder to hack. But I just take my purchase, I put it in a, a bag that they don't see, and I walk out the door. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, so, so, David, predictions on our election? You figure, you figure it's going to be Hillary, right? Yes, and like as I said before, I think nothing much is going to change with Hillary. Well, you, you mean you don't think the country is going to change that much? I don't think so either. No, uh, we're going to have four more years of Obama. No, oh, jeez, oh, my no, it's not Obama, it's Hillary. Okay. It's and, uh, and, and, oh, uh, Alex. Yes. Um, I know you're going now, like that, but I, I wanted to ask you about Clinton Care, but I, you don't have any time. Clinton to, Care. Yeah, they're calling it Clinton Care, the way they said Obamacare, right? Like if she gets in, Hillary, it's going to be Clinton Care. Well, but Hillary was going for, you know, socialized medicine in the first term of, of Bill's. Uh, uh, right, and then they told her to stop talking about it and never bring it up. Well, because it was it was creating so much controversy that they figured they he didn't want that controversy to be holding back everything else he was doing. Because look at what happened to Obama. Well, <laughs> yeah, you don't try to Obama. accomplish, you, you, you wait to accomplish the big deal in your last year, your last couple of years in office, not your first year, you know. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, David, I can't tell you how wonderful it is to have you here tonight. You know, oh, thank you very much. One of my I... favorite people, and also yeah. uh, thanks to uh, uh, Tom Yamaguchi who left because he does get frustrated. because of Phil. He left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah because he said it's true. I tried to Snopes that, and I couldn't find it on Snopes. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. I uh, I uh, will. I'm disappointed you're not coming out, but Alex is going to be the beneficiary of uh, your company. Yeah. Well, when you come to New York, David, you know, I want to I want to see your face. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. I'll, I'll contact you. Anyway, call us again soon, Jeff. Thank you. Always appreciate the call, Tony. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Phil. Yeah, and Charlene. Alex, thank you. Fuck you. And uh, fuck <laughs> me. I'll give you the New York thing. Fuck me. Fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> right. Have a good night. And that's it from here, ladies and gentlemen. That's the end of our uh, our little program. Let me just get sign everybody off here so the next show can can use the phone system. Uh, I'm Alex Bennett. That's it for tonight, and, uh, and we'll see you again on uh, Tuesday, I guess. Yeah, that's when we'll see you next. And in the meantime. As always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Okay, and to all the people out there who are uh, are watching the TV thing, thank you so much for having joined us this evening. And we'll do this again on the TV thing uh, next Friday. But in the meantime, have a nice week. And don't forget to listen to us on Tuesday. You know, we're on gabnet.net, okay? At 10 o'clock at night. Bye.